Namaste, everyone. Namaste, baby. Hey, Gurudev. To my teachers. I heard in my videos. Okay, I was on the road, 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 the road. Hi Liz, how you doing? Hi, how are you? How is it work? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Literally, I set up the Zoom call wrong. You know, I didn't put it open. So people have to like, I have to set people for them to come in. Oh, man. Yeah, how you doing though? I'm okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I'm alright. I always said, well, I broke up um, Tuesday, so they're tough time now, so. Okay. So it's all good. The but off. the time's going quick. <laughs> it's flying. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just gonna keep yeah. accepting people while they come in. And just gonna let everyone know we're live. Do I text to say we're live? Yeah, yeah. What's good? What's good, Dev? Namaste. What's good? You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Excited. Very excited. Awesome. I'm excited. Hi, I'm in the gym, but I'm excited. Okay, okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Get it in. Yeah, get a lot of legs in today, man. Hey, that was just so. You no, know, I did upper body training today. Hey, Razan. Okay, nice. Good. How you doing? Hey, yeah. Uh... Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for coming through. Welcome to the stream. No, thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to hear what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's about to be lit tonight. Uh -huh. i for a few more people to come through. Sure. Yeah, well, in the meantime, y'all can enjoy the music. <laughs> How's everyone doing, though, today? Like, I hope everyone's had a lovely day, yeah? Yep. Awesome, awesome. You know, today's topic is going to be about what it takes to be a leader. You know, so we're just gonna run through a few things, but I'm gonna wait like two more minutes and we're gonna get started. We're not gonna wait for the latecomers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, I think everybody's probably Christmas shopping. Yeah, it is busy during these times, so I don't expect too many people to come through. D fine is last good. minute shopping is real. <laughs> yeah. It was good, it was good. yeah, I still haven't finished my shopping myself. I still need to I'm do some shopping, but it's also it's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's okay. what's up, man. What was that? Yeah. Multitasking. I said multitasking, that's dope. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Did you hear me? Hey, it was good, D fine. Thank you for coming through. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to get started, you know, while the others... Yo, yo. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to jump straight in. Thank you, everyone, for coming through. I'm really grateful to have you on here. You know, I'm hosting today's class. It's an honor. Get it. You know, if you guys don't know me, I'm going to reintroduce myself. My name is Weijon. You know, I'm 23. First and foremost, I'm a spiritual leader, a guru. You know, I love meditating. I'm a meditator, you know, and right now, currently, you know, I'm just starting my business online and I do work for the airport. So a company called the Nutter at the airport. So that's kind of what I do right now, you know, and um, yeah, J Guru Dev. J Guru Dev is a saying I like to say to all my mentors, my teachers, which means respect to the wise one, you know, roughly translates to that. And um, as part of the Stay Hungry Club, 
what we love to do before any class is give three things we're grateful for. So we're just going to go around and everyone give us three things we're grateful for. So I'm going to start off. First and foremost, I'm happy and grateful to be alive today, to have the ability to breathe. You know, every single day, people are passing away and people are being born. So it's just a thing that I like to remind myself of, not in the sense of being morbid towards things like that, but just being grateful and appreciative of that. Secondly, I'm very happy and grateful for my new job because finally I can support myself financially and don't have to struggle, you know, which is amazing. And um, thirdly, I'm grateful for everyone here today because you guys literally light up my world. You make me happy and thank you. Next, uh, we should go Devon. Can you hear me guys? How are you guys doing? You guys good? Yeah, we're doing well. We're doing well. Awesome. I'm in the gym right now, but yeah, guys, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to drive to the gym. There's not a lot of people have to drive or have a car, so I'm grateful for that possible. Um, also, I'm grateful for everyone on this call, especially I'm um, the newcomer. I appreciate you coming through. I know you're busy wrapping your toys, but you still um, take the opportunity to enlighten us with your presence, so grateful for that, and I'm grateful my family and I'm friends I appreciate them so much thank you guys thank you thank you Devon uh define three things you're grateful for yes sir grateful to be alive grateful for the family and grateful for another day to grow awesome awesome thank you for that um let's go over Zan three things you're grateful for can you turn on your camera also everyone can you turn on your camera because you know it just makes it more interactive if you can't then that's fine but if you can, then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm grateful for family to be alive and for my friends as well. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Liz, three things you're grateful for? I'm grateful for my health and I'm grateful for my family and friends and jobs uh, and my job and opportunities. Awesome. Thank you. And Carly, three things you're grateful for. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm grateful for uh, having a great day today with family members. I'm grateful for my wonderful children, and I'm grateful for a roof over my head. Awesome, awesome. Thank you all for that. You know, gratitude is essential. You know, I like to say gratitude is my daily attitude because in everything we do, once you're grateful, it amplifies it. So gratitude is an amplifier of energy and it's something we should always, you know, implement into our day. Now, we're going to get straight into the topic of today, which is what it takes to be a leader. You know, because I'm literally on this journey. You know, I consider myself a leader, but as leaders, we always have to grow. We always have to learn. We always have to also be a student, you know, because we can always learn more. So right now, I'm just taking off the hat of the student and putting on the hat of the teacher for the space of this class. And um, the first main quality, right, of being a leader, let's kind of define what is a leader. You know, we can go around and give our opinions too. But my definition of being a leader is someone, you know, like the word says, that leads, but someone that can also, you know, follow, you know, someone that leads by example, you know, um, a leader is someone that also can lead themselves, you know, meaning they can actually take the necessary action, you know, to progress and advance in everyday life. You know, for me, that's the definition of a leader. Um, can we get defined? Are you available to just let us know what your definition of a leader is? I love it. I love it. <clears throat> yeah, leadership. This is a great topic for today. When it comes to leadership, some people on the call might be like, well, I'm not a leader or family. I want to tell you today, if you are on this call, if you are breathing, you are 1,000% a leader. I'll give you an example. You are a leader with your children. You're a leader with your siblings. You're a leader with your family. You're a leader to anybody that's watching you on social media. You're a leader if you have people inside of your business, right? So all of these different areas, we're all leaders on this call. So I believe a leader is somebody who takes the time to not only grow themselves, right, always a student but somebody that knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way, right? So at the end of the day, that comes from confidence, that comes from time, that comes from experience. So every every great leader was once a phenomenal 
follower and still is. So always a student to be the best leader. It's huge. Yes, thank you, thank you. And Carly, can I get your definition of a leader? Oh, wow, you put me on the spot now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the definition of a leader, I think we have, um, somebody that takes control, somebody that guides you, somebody that um, basically, yeah, just leads you in the right direction. And for well, that, really. Sorry, that's not a great definition, but that's the best way I can put it. That's, that's amazing definition. Yeah. I mean, it's just a certain interpretation of what you believe in it. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. All right, thank exactly, you. Exactly. Cool. So let's move forward, you know, because what all we all nailed it. You know, a leader is least change your status with the find, you know, someone that you know can follow, can take control, you know, can lead themselves, you know, can show oh. others the way of how to do things. That is a leader. And leaders are awesome. not born, leaders are made. That's something I want all oh, of I love that. to understand. You know, anyone can be a leader. It's all about having that desire within you to say um i can show people the way to do things i can show people how to get better every day and that's the wow. only requirement it really takes to be a leader you know just having that willingness to guide people and to want people to do better to advance people you know so we're going to get into 10 qualities of a leader so we can all pinpoint these qualities within us and once we know we don't we're not so strong at we can you know, start to develop that. And those that we already have, we can, you know, utilize that even more in being a leader. The first, you know, main quality of a leader is being unwavering with courage, you know. So this means just like being courageous. And I like to define things because we all have different perspectives, we have different meaning. But what does it mean to have courage? You know, some people might think our oh, courage is about just going all in, being brave, you know, not being afraid, not being scared. But to me, the actual definition of courage is regardless of your fear, regardless of how frightened you are by a situation, having the courage to still take action. You know, so when I'm being okay. courageous, I'm not just void of fear or void of, you know, um, what's the other word fear or like worry or whatever right it's just that regardless of my fear regardless of my worries I'm still taking action I'm not paralyzed by that you know I have that courage inside to be like you know what I'm gonna take action regardless with all this nervousness with all this anxiety I'm still gonna take those steps to keep advancing forward you know so that's the first main quality of a leader and courage is something we all possess. It's all about do you utilize it or not? Because, you know, we all show courage in different aspects. Most people show courage doing things they're confident about, you know, because it doesn't take too much. You know, it's like, okay, I might be nervous, but I know I'm confident in this field because I've had experience. So I'm going to do it regardless of my nervousness. But when we take courage to another level is when we can implement that same principle of being courageous doing things that we've never experienced before, you know, diving out of our comfort zone, it takes a lot of courage. And that is the main way to really practice your courage, you know, by getting yourself out of your comfort zone and doing things you haven't done before. Now we're gonna move on to the second one. The second qualities of a leader, a strong leader is self-control. And self-control can go into a lot of different things like being disciplined, you know, um, being accountable, you know, um, setting goals, you know, self-control is just like, to me personally, self-control is kind of like, I tell myself I'm going to do something and I'm going to do it. And if I tell myself I'm not going to do something, I'm not going to do it either. You know, like I live my life by a stoic philosophy, a stoic way to see things. And um, there was a samurai that I was studying as part of the stoic philosophy, which uh, was a great Japanese samurai right and literally in everything it did it was all about being the best swordsman in the whole of japan that's how disciplined he had he was and that's how much self-control he had where he oriented his whole life around achieving his goals which is to be the greatest swordsman 
And for me, that mindset was huge because for the longest time, I've thought about self-control as in uh, being really hard on myself, putting pressure on myself to not do certain things that I felt like were not beneficial for me or like always being on talks, always being focused, never really relaxing and having fun and playing and enjoying things. It was all about just executing, executing and advancing. But self-control in itself is being able to be balanced in both of it. I'm going to work hard, but I also know when to relax, when to chill, when, when to go out for a walk, you know, because at the end of the day, it's all about controlling myself in a way that allows me to be disciplined, that allows me to have a coherent character, you know, that I can go into the world with. So that's the second one, self-control, you know, just having that code you live by that is like, okay, no matter what is going on, I'm going to keep living this certain way because I know where I want to be in the future. You know, so that's my definition of self-control. Now, the third one is having a keen sense of integrity and justice. You know, and what is integrity? Because integrity, like, it's, 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 it's a word that with me at times, I struggle to really get that concept. But just by speaking that word integrity, what it sounds like to me is being true to myself. You know, that's what it means for me to have integrity, you know, being like integrating everything I know, you know, integration, integrity, you know, they're kind of the same word. So it's kind of like utilizing what I know, putting it together and sticking to it, believing that I know this and it's going to work. Like, I don't have to go outside of myself to find what works for me. I know I believe in myself so strongly that I know what works for me. And that's integrity to me. You know, let's just go around because I'm not really sure about that particular word. Other people might see it differently. You know, so um, Devon, what do you think? Like, what does that word integrity, what does it mean for you? Um. Can you hear me, guys? Still in, in the dribble yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, integrity to me. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, integrity means to me just being honest, loyal, and trustworthy to you, mm. anybody or your friends and that. Mm. Awesome. Sorry, awesome. guys. I really like good. that one. I really like Define, what do you have to say on integrity? Um, so, for me, what I've realized a lot of the times, words are very powerful. Mm. Right. There's been so many times where even for me, like I've been reading and I come across this word. It's just like, I don't really know what this means. You can go back and you can look at the definition of that word and that'll change the whole sentence, the whole vibration of the sentence. So yeah. for things like this, like honestly, all of these words, I would I would suggest to literally go to the definition and we can see what they say. So integrity already already the hard word for you. Here's what integrity says. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. Right. Mm -hmm. So to me, what does that mean? To be able to raise your standards. Like if I were to ask you right now, what are your core values? What are your core values for your body? What are your core values for your mindset? What are your core values for your family? What are your core values for your spiritual side? So integrity is, I love that. Having high moral principles for yourself. So awesome. powerful definition for that one. I really like that definition. Definitely. And, um, Part of having integrity as well is having that keen sense of justice. Like Defon said, you know, integrity is having that high standard, that quality of honesty, you know, and, you know, moral principles. So justice literally plays with that. If I see justice being done in the world, you know, I will stand up. I will speak that this isn't right. This shouldn't be the way it is. And of course, we all have different, you know, perspective and different opinions people have different morals you know but at the end of the day there's a universal language of truth that says this is wrong this is right and to me that is justice you know living in alignment with what you know in your heart to be true and you know standing for that fighting for that you know so that's what a leader does also a leader fights for what he believes in unwaveringly like regardless of what society you know, deems to be right or wrong. We all know there's a lot of injustice going on in the world, even with the so-called system, the justice system. We all know there's a lot of injustice being done in the name of justice. So we got to define it for ourselves. What is justice as leaders? We all got to have that 
keen sense of justice and the fact that, you know, I'm a fight for what I believe to be right. And whatever is wrong, you know, I'm a correct it. So that is the third, you know, quality of a leader. The fourth one is definiteness of decision. Meaning when I decide to do something, I do it and I do it now. I don't leave it or procrastinate it for the future. Or I don't say, oh, I'm going to try to do something. As a leader, you make your decision. Leaders are not indecisive. They're not going back and forth with, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? No. Why? Because they always have a game plan, which is the actual, the next quality, having a plan and planning to the end. But the fact that leaders always have a game plan, right? They always have a plan of action means whenever they make their decision, they make it wholeheartedly they make it like i'm not going back on this i'm gonna execute this fully you know and that is you know having definiteness of decision you know you're not constantly going back and forth for people you know your morals you know your ethics you know the code you live by and you will not compromise that for nothing you're gonna decide this is what you want to do and you're gonna do it or you know you're gonna go home <laughs> Okay, now the next one, the next one is definiteness of plan, which I kind of talked a bit about, but let's elaborate on to that. You know, um, I read in the book by Robert Greene, um, The Laws of Human Nature, you have to plan till the end, or is it the 48 Laws of Power? It's one of those two. I think it was the 48 Laws of Power, but it says it's you have to plan to the end. Well. What was that? It's a think on it's in Think and Grow Rich as well, the book I gave you. Okay, I'm still I'm going fine. through that. Still going through that. All right. Yeah, no there's a saying, you have to plan to the end. You know, in life these days, I know things are busy. But the, when you plan to the end, you actually have a vision. You know, you're no longer short-sighted or tunnel vision where you can easily miss things. You know, when you have that foresight, you know, you're looking at a whole perspective, the smaller picture, the details of things. And you're also looking at the whole vision and you're utilizing both of them in your plan of action. You cannot go wrong. You will not be blindsided by nothing because you are prepared for everything. You are prepared for the worst that can happen and you are prepared for things going your way by having a plan that's definite, that is based on, you know, whatever it is you want in terms of your desires, your goals, whatever it is you want to achieve in this life. You need to have a plan from A to Z that outline every single detail of what can go right in terms of positive stuff and what could go wrong in terms of negative stuff. Because life works in yin and yang. You know, there's a spiritual saying as above, so below, as within, so without, as with the soul, so with the universe. So I'm always looking at all these angles of things when I'm making my plan. If my plan doesn't go according to, you know, how I want it to go, what is what are the contingencies I could put in place to make sure, you know, I don't fall flat on my face or I don't look stupid? You know, what are the plans that I've put in place to make sure I can keep going, reaching my goals, no matter what failures I encounter? Why? Because I know failures are only a catalyst to success. They don't mean that I failed or I can't achieve this goal. Because, like, you know, I face the obstacle. But that's what people get into when they don't have an actual plan, when they're just freestyling off the top. You know, sometimes it is good to improvise, to freestyle. But having a plan will always safeguard you. It will always make the low not that low. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we can all agree we want to maximize our highs and minimize our low. And by having a definite plan, we can do that. You can put the safeguard in place to keep us steadily advancing towards the long-term vision. Thank you. Thank you so much, Devon. You know, that's so good to see that you guys are enjoying this. If you guys can just drop like one in the chat or some fire emojis, if you guys are enjoying this lecture and you're actually gaining value from this, I can know I'm doing my job correctly. <laughs> that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to move on to the next quality of a quality leader, which is, you know, having habits, right? Um, wait, sorry, what did I write in my note? 
Okay, yeah. Being in the habit of doing more than you're paid for, you know, which is like going above and beyond. A leader would do that for his team. A leader will go above and beyond for his team. You know, a leader will always check on, on everyone to make sure they're advancing, you know, check in on their moods and stuff to make sure, okay, no one is feeling bad about themselves. We're all feeling good. We're all feeling purposeful. A leader is in the habits of doing these things. A leader is in the habits of checking on, you know, the close ones he has and checking on his team every day to make sure no one is slacking off. And if they are slacking off, a leader doesn't like make him feel bad about it. You know, it gives them constructive feedback. You know, it tells them what they've done well, you know, what they're not doing well and what they can improve on. And it doesn't just say it. It leads by example. It shows it. You know, he actually sits down with them, help him through it, guide him through it. You know, this is what a leader is in the habit of doing. And leaders, they do this because they know this is my responsibility. I want to be a leader, so I'm responsible for my team, for my people. And I'm responsible for m making sure they're advancing. You know, if you're a leader of any team and your people are not progressing, it's not their fault. It's your fault as the leader. Maybe you're not communicating properly. You know, maybe you're not taking effective action and showing them and leading by an example. You know, maybe they just don't like you. Now, you got to fix that. You know, you got to be in the habit of constantly building relationship with your team, you know, constantly, you know, communicating with them. Communication is so key as a leader, you know, and this is why, you know, me and my mentors were always practicing our communication because, you know, we know who we are. We know who we want to be. And for us to keep leading, you know, for us to keep advancing our team and our people, we have to make sure we're communicating on a high level. You know, and that is, you know, that habit of a leader. You will always do more than what paid for. It's not about, you know, people giving to me necessarily. It's like I'm going to overwhelm the world with so much giving that, you know, undoubtedly I'm going to get mine. You feel me? Because energy comes back around. What you give out comes back to you. So I'm not giving or leading so people can follow me or so I can receive. I'm doing it because this is my role. This is what I love to do. And I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep setting the example. And when people see a star shining, when people see a strong leader, they want to follow because they don't want to follow the weak leader that is indecisive or is unsure about his decisions or doesn't know how to communicate properly or that always blames his team for when shit are going wrong. No one wants to follow that leader. But the leader that can take responsibility, that tells people, yo, you know what? It's not your fault. I guess I need to do my job better as a leader. And I need to prove why you should follow me. You know, that leader we want to follow. I can I can testify to that in myself. And I'm sure you guys can agree as well. You know, which is amazing. And uh, we're going to move to the next one, which is um, having an appealing personality. You know, we all know life as much as it's not about just the looks and just the first impression, because we're all complex human beings, we have deep layers to us, you know, being an effective leader, your presentation got to be on point, you know, like people will judge you first and foremost on how you present yourself, you know, so you got to hold that into account and have an appealing personality that, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That is likable by all. Now, I'm not trying to get anyone to be like, oh, I, I need to be liked by everyone because that's not realistic. Some people are not going to like you no matter what you do. But as a leader, you have to have this mentality of appealing to everyone, you know, listening to everyone's point of view, not just gravitating to the people you like or the people that gives you a good response. You know, you got to tolerate everyone and you got to treat everyone equally. You know, and you got to be transparent enough to know, to let people know why, okay, you might be showing more attention to that guy than the rest. You know, so that's where communication also comes back into play. Constantly communicating with your team. If you're showing someone more attention than others, let them know this is the reason why, you know. And it's all about also kind of like knowing, 
like when to say certain things and when not to say certain things, which is something I'm learning because I'm very like vocal and transparent and super expressive about how I feel. But the more I learn to be a leader and I get into that mentality, I'm like, not everything needs to be shared. You know, of course, be as transparent as you can be, but certain things might not be the right time to, you know, say that. So that's part of having that appealing personality. And politicians, they do this really well, you know, because no matter what negativity you're going to, like, communicate to a politician, they will listen, they will be like, yeah, I understand. And they will flip it into something that everyone can be happy about. You know, that's something I've observed by, you know, studying politicians. They do this really well. They can appeal to the masses, you know, and this is what we need to start incorporating into a character uh, to appeal to different people you know of different culture different ethnicity different languages and all of that you know so that goes a long way in really being a leader people wants to follow just having that universal communication language you know so yeah that's very essential now we only got about nine more minutes here so i'm gonna kind of brief through the rest we've only got three more to go through and the next one is being empathetic and understanding. Now, empathy, like, empathy is a thing that, like, I find very, like, funny, you know, because, like, reading the book by Robert Greene and just my own natural experience, like, I know most of us are narcissistic. Like, I know some people might not like that, but that is the truth. Like, you can't deny that because we all have this I am experience. We are the main um character of our movie i'm not gonna make define or devon or liz or carly the main character of my story that wouldn't work for me so i'm the main character of my story but having empathy means i can put myself in the shoes of someone else you know i can put myself in experience of define you know and be like how does define wake up how does define live what is define's thought processes when he goes through his day and by me pondering on these things and just imagining myself living Define's life that builds my empathy you know when I listen to Define now I could better understand where he's coming from you know also having that mentality of listening to understand not just to reply you know because a lot of us we might think, yeah, right, we're just right. listening to people to understand them. But a lot of times we're just listening because we want to say our piece. You know, so part of being a quality leader is just stepping back more from always having to share your opinion and always having to have the last word, always having people must follow your words to, okay, let me understand people better. And when people are listening, I'm not even going to bother trying to respond or reply. I'm just going to listen to interpret what they're saying and ask myself this question like, why are they saying that? What is their day-to-day -day life like? You know, how did this person wake up? What has this person been through? Because like I said, we're all complex people. We, we don't know everything about each other. As much as we talk to each other, as much as we share with each other, there's still a lot of things we don't know about each other. So just having that awareness to be like, okay, I'm going to like just feel today understand listen to understand you know and when there is that space of silence for me to reply i'm not just gonna reply and start talking about myself and what i'm going through like it's a big deal but instead i'm gonna ask question because i've been listening i've been understanding this person i'm in communication with and now i'm genuinely curious as to how they live you know and do but if you truly listen you definitely will have one or two things you want to ask about you know, and then that'll be the right way to, you know, respond or communicate to whoever you've been listening, asking them questions like, oh, that was interesting. I remembered when you said this and that, you know, and I was just curious, like, why do you think like that? Or, you know, what made you this way? So, and then they can get into their story. And what happens, you just see energy starts to build up start to get more communication going back and forth and that's what true communication is it's not just me talking 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 and everyone listening listening communication really gets at its highest point when there's a nice flow of energy and communication going back and forth between both individual and as a leader 
you always have to take that approach of listening more first. That way, when you win that person over, they would want to listen to you like talk all the time as well. You know, so yeah, that's a very powerful one that I really enjoy speaking on. Wait, and, um, wait, John, we got like five more minutes. So just say the last one and get people to ask question or awesome. see what thank they think you. about it. Cause, thank cause you. Because you're going to miss that, that opportunity. Yeah. All right, cheers, buddy. Cool. The next one is literally attention to details. So that's pretty straightforward, you know, just focusing on the details of things. And um, yeah, that goes a long way. Um, the last one is having the willingness to take full responsibility. So I pretty much already talked about these two last ones. You know, literally just having detail, observing people, observing their body language, you know, reading into their moods. You know, this will give you a better understanding of why people are a certain way. Because everything is in details. You know, we all know that saying the devil is in the details. It's not really the devil in the detail. It is what's truly going on with people in the details. And when you don't look at the details, when you keep on the surface, you're never really going to know that person, you know. And the leader always have to make sure he knows everyone in his team thoroughly. And that's it, guys. You know, drop one, one, one in the chat if you guys enjoyed. Let's go. Let's go. That's fire. That's fire, bro. And um, thank you all. Thank you all. Now we're open for questions. We're open for any expression, any opinions you have on the class tonight. You know, yeah, let us know yep. what you're thinking. Mate, that was fire, bro. You, you killed it today. Because I remember when we were doing um, the, the study. Remember we were doing it, you were like half asleep. But <laughs> did you go over it today? Did yeah, you go I did over go, it today again? Yeah, I did go over uh, it again. You know, I was also listening to some podcasts from a mentor of mine on leadership. Awesome. So, I, yeah. I can tell you, did you, you did your due diligence today, man. I appreciate today's um lecture. You was fire. You went in. I was buzzing. I was in the gym and I was like, damn, the boy's going in. I so I had to come up in the gym and show some love, man. I appreciate you, bro. Um, yeah, question. I mean, just keep doing what you're doing, bro. Just keep elevating and just keep growing. That's all I'll tell yeah. you, man. That's the plan. Good, good session. Bro. Um, Rezan, uh, like, can you unmute? Like, what do you think? What do you think is your first time here with the Stay Hungry Club? You know, a fire you session mean? today. Fire brought the heat. He wasn't playing. He did his homework. He brought he brought it to the field. Well done. And this one is recorded. It's going on the tube. Well done, brother. Well done. <laughs> lit, lit, lit. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, Razan. Yeah, well done. That was really good. Uh, it was nice to hear what um this is about as well. Mm. And I think you had some good points. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Especially uh the one about speaking when you need to speak and not just to reply. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, a really good. Point. Also, guys. Next That's time, guys, get, get, a, get a pencil and a, a paper, guys. Start taking notes. Because most of the time, you want to be in between implement. It's good to listen, but it's same time, you need to apply. And the best way to apply is just writing down because you're tapping into more than one senses when you write down. And it, especially if you're reading it as well and you go over it, start using those five senses and it, start elevating your, your game, guys. But yeah, whenever right. you see, for example, myself or default or whatever, anybody in here do a lecture, we take the, the due diligence to invest and, you know, take notes and give it to you guys. I would like for you guys to do the same as well. Just appreciate you guys right down and just take some notes. Because at the end of the day, we all are students in the game. And he did speak oh, yeah. about that as well. Being a leader, you need to be a good mm. follower. So if you're not implementing that structure within your game, you're going to struggle as a leader. But yeah, um, Wijan, appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate all of you. You know, um, yeah. So I'm going to leave you guys on that note. You know, let's all enjoy the rest of our day. It was an amazing class. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's class. And yeah, let's get it. Namaste, everyone. It's been your boy, Wish Night. Signing out. Thanks, Wijan. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Carly. Thank you, Liz. Thank, Thank you. you. Blessed love. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to get some food now. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs>